we are gathered here for this resilience project, which we have uh, we launched uh, just last month, interviewing the one and only Mel Siegel, and now uh, we are about to uh, have an interview with uh, Edith. And what a blessing! Um, this is all about. Uh, this project is all about getting to know our members. Uh, it's all about connecting the generations one to the other. Uh, and with that, we have uh, Gavin, if you would wave for us, Gavin Murphy, uh, <coughs> who maybe can share a little bit about himself in a few moments. Uh, and then across the generations to Edie Spass, uh, uh, interviewer and interviewee. Uh, and in this incredible time that we are living through, uh, terrifying, awesome, uh, this, is, uh, this is a time to dig deep, a uh, time to look towards hope, towards resilience, uh, and uh, and well, we are a lucky people that we have a lot to draw from when it comes to resilience. We have uh, thousands of years of tradition and thousands of years of history of uh, being, uh, being kicked down and picking ourselves back up again. And, uh, and that is a, a story that is true for uh, for our people, and it's also true for each of us. And so we walk away, uh, hopefully with this interview, with a better sense of resilience and hope. So I have talked enough. You are here to listen to uh, the one and only Gavin and Edie. And so um, just a quick introduction on uh, Gavin. Um, uh, and Gavin, you can unmute yourself. Uh, Gavin has I've, been, hi, how, tell us how long you've been a member of JCOGS, Gavin. I don't know, since I was like six, six I think. Since you were six years old, and can you tell folks uh, how old you are now, if you don't mind? I'm 13. Uh, you, you know, when I, when I started uh, here at JCOGS, you were the one welcoming me uh, to our Olam Chesed religious school, uh, and um, and so it's just so great that you are here and doing this. Uh, and uh, so uh, Gavin's going to ask some questions of Edie, and uh, and if you'd like to see, there's a if you want to see who's uh, speaking, you can switch to speaker view. Uh, if you know how to do that, uh, uh, either gallery view or speaker view, you can hit the those little those little dots in the top right corner, or if you're on a phone, it might be elsewhere. Um, so then the person who's speaking will see directly. Um, and uh, and away we go, Gavin. Why don't you ask your first question? Um, it was so nice to talk to you the other day. Thank you, Devin. Gavin, I feel the same way. Uh, when did you move to Vermont and what brought you here? I moved to Vermont two years after my husband died. I had a difficult time overcoming the loss of my beloved husband and my niece, Dr. Deborah Black and her husband, Michelle Cadet, and my brother, Dr. Percy Black and, and sister-in-law, Virginia Black all lived here and it seemed like a good thing for me to do and it turned out to be an excellent move and so i bought the land in, in, in directly between my niece and her husband and my brother and his wife and i lived in the I lived in the middle but between them and that was 20 years ago sadly my brother is no longer with us but um my niece and, and nephew and my sister-in-law. I'm, I'm in the middle of all of them. 
outside. I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, How long have you been a member of JCOGS? Oh dear. Um, I, I don't know exactly, but perhaps nine or ten years, something like that. I, uh, when I first came to Vermont, I uh, became involved with Beth Jacob, um, and then I went began to um, go to services at uh, at Jacob's and was much more comfortable and much happier, and so I joined Jacob's. I never. Uh, um, uh, never dropped my membership at Beth Jacob, but I, I was very happy to become affiliated with uh, with our shul. And to me, it's still shul. I grew up calling it shul. Uh, it was interesting to discover that you grew up in Montreal. Yes. Can you tell us about your experience and how you needed to be resilient as a young Jewish girl? Oh boy, did did we ever have to be resilient? Did I ever have to be resilient? Um, we lived uh, just a half a block uh, on, on the same road, just a half a block from our school. However, every day after school, five days a week, every day after school, we went to Cheder. We, we, we skated home and had a snack and off we went to Cheder. And I usually uh, zipped along on my skates. And it's a good thing I was a good skater because usually I was chased to Cheder by the French kids and, and they were waiting for us when we came out of Cheder. They, they were waiting to beat the living daylights out of us. Fortunately, I was a fast runner and most of the time outran them. Once in a while did not, and so I bore the brunt of it. My brother Percy, oh my goodness, what he, he took so much abuse. Um, uh, abuse that they heaped on him, and then abuse because he was protecting us. Percy is my niece, Dr. Deborah Black's father. Sadly, Percy is no longer with us. Percy was our oldest brother. He was five years older than I. And then after me came Perry. Perry was two years younger than I. And Perry and I were, were twins two years apart and remained that way all of our lives. Percy, Percy and Hester, our sister, were very close, just maybe 14 months apart. They grew up like twins. So we had two sets of twins just months apart uh, growing up. Now, Sadly and unbelievably, I'm the only one left, and I, I just can't bear it. But speaking of resilience, my goodness, we, we could certainly learn to be very resilient because we, we were uh, subjected to tremendous anti-Semitism growing up. Um, it would be hard for kids here to have a concept of, of what that was like. You lit literally ran for your life. And I had the fastest running little legs. You, as much as these legs don't work today, that's how fast they ran when I was a kid. And most of the time I outran them, uh, much to their frustration. Uh, so that's the environment we grew up in. It was a hostile, extremely anti-Semitic environment um, beyond words to describe the feeling um, and the horror of that and the fear of beaten, having the living daylights beaten out of you every day because you couldn't run fast enough. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. It sounded like you had a great family. Did you oh, ever yes. Did you ever experience anti-Semitism in Vermont? I can't say that I have directly experienced that. I, I can't, if I have, it has been so subtle that it went over me, but I can't say that I have directly experienced anything like that in Vermont. Nothing remotely with what like, what, like I grew up with. So no, I I I can't really attest to uh, 
to that experience here. Thankfully. How has how, how has Judaism and community been a source of strength for you? Oh my goodness, what a wonderful question! Oh, it's, it's a question that has depth, and and um, it demands a, a response that with with consideration, and, and you're asking what impact Judaism has had on my life. Primarily, that's yes. your question. Well, and and also what strength it's brought you. Oh my my goodness! Um, it it the strength it has developed in me from the time I was a kid was the strength of appreciating, and, and I, I you know I I haven't articulated this before, but I'm just thinking out loud, appreciating who I was as a young Jewish girl. I loved my Judaism. I hated to go to Cheder more than I could ever, ever describe to you. For 10 years, I went to Cheder. I hated every single day of going. Part of that, I suppose, was the, the difficulty of out, out running being chased to Cheder and being chased back home. But today I would not take anything for the experience of having 10 years in Cheder with my mores and, and, and um, with the friendships there, with the experience with the teachers, with learning uh, to write in Yiddish and to speak Yiddish and um, some Hebrew, not as much Hebrew as I would have liked, but I, I certainly am very fluent in Yiddish um, and can write in Yiddish or used to be able to write in Yiddish. I think I probably still could. So um, what influence did that have on me? It had, um, it had every influence it could possibly have. Most of it was positive. Uh, the negatives are, were uh, sometimes having the, beat, your, the beat, living daylights beaten out of you because you were a Jew. Um, in school, interestingly enough, now that the question has been raised, in school uh, there was uh, anti-Semitism that we Jewish kids experienced, sometimes directly from the teachers. Um, not all, but... Uh, a few of them were were uh, clearly virulently anti-Semitic, and um, and we felt the brunt of it. So what was required was that we out out smart in every way as best we could, um, outperform scholastically, so that our grades were at the top, uh, insofar as possible. And we learned resilience, we learned to overcome adversity. And I think that has stood me personally in good stead all of my life. There has been plenty, I am just turned 92. In 92 years, there's plenty of adversity that you have to overcome. And I think I learned that as a kid growing up uh, in Montreal with the anti-Semitism that we faced. It was awful. It was just awful. My brother, Purse, had more bloody noses. Debbie's, Deborah's father had more bloody noses protecting us than, than we could even count. We always said his nose was a little crooked because of it was busted so many times. They smashed him so many times. That's what we grew up with. Purse took the brunt of it for all of us, for us, for the rest of the, we were four kids, two boys and two girls. Purse actually took the brunt of it. He grew up with the worst of it. What helped you get through the experience? Sorry, I, I say that again. What helped you get through the experience? 
my brother Percy, uh, my parents, my father in particular. Um, what did they, what did they, what did Percy say to you? What did your dad say to you? How did you, what did, what did, how did they guide you? Uh, that to, to be who you are, never to apologize for that and run away from injury, but run away from, from uh, making people uh, make you feel that that is a stain. And I, I'm just speaking off the top of my head now. I um, haven't thought about this in, in, in many, many years, as you might imagine. But I think my parents came through so much adversity. They were refugees for five years. They starved. They finally made it to Montreal, Montreal, nine months pregnant with Percy. Percy was born one month to the day after they arrived in Montreal. And, um, and so, of course, he grew up with terrific anti-Semitism as the rest of us did growing up in Montreal. Uh, the French kids were always there waiting, waiting to beat the living hell out of us especially when we came out of Hader. Um, what, what got us through that? I think essentially I have to credit my brother Percy primarily. He was there. Um, if he, he sometimes got out of, Percy was five years older than I was, uh, if he, uh, five and a half years, and he, got out of Hader a little bit ahead of me, he'd be right there waiting, if he could, uh, to protect me. Otherwise, I could outrun the kids that were trying to beat the living daylights out of me, uh, simply because I was Jewish and it was coming out of Hader. Um, so that's how we survived day to day. And what it did for me and I would say for my siblings as well, but I can speak certainly for myself, is that it ingrained my Judaism in me. It didn't, it had the opposite effect of what you might think. I became more and more immersed in my Judaism and the importance of standing up for who I am never apologizing for being Jewish. And um, just overcoming, overcoming the often the horror that some, we kids were sometimes subjected to. Um, I think that must have instilled tremendous resilience and fortitude because all four of us kids were the same <clears throat> in our in our feelings about Judaism. Um, my feelings are so powerful in so many areas um, that it would be hard to enunciate in a short time like this. I love the language, I love the Yiddish language, and I wish there were people that I could speak to in Yiddish. I love the language. Um, and in, and, and in Sprachen. <laughs> in Sprachen. <laughs> yes, Tatala, yes, yes, I can hear my... Bindu. We can speak to you, but we can't. I love you to read Yiddish. It's the best language. It's the best language. It's hot as I feel. Um, I've spoken it for so long. Uh, I'm trying to say it's so expressive. It Absolutely. Is. Absolutely. Edie, can you maybe to round this out um, as we uh, make our way towards services, would you share? One of your, one or two of your most favorite Yiddish expressions uh, for us. I, I know you are a wealth of them. 
Choose, choose wisely. There are youth here with us. Some of those Yiddish expressions are uh, go beyond the pale. Well, no, well, I, I, that's not what I uh, uh, learned or what, what would do, but... Um, Oh goodness, I, 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 I haven't had time to think about this, but there are so many. Uh, you want two Yiddish expressions to leave these kids with. Give us one, give us two, give us anything. We'll take anything. Um, I forgot how you say pride or proud. I forgot. Do you remember how to say that? Do you remember how to say proud? Nachas. Yeah. Not his pride in something else. Okay. Shet Nachis. Yes. In von dein Yiddishkeit. Shet Nachis von dein Yiddishkeit. Do you understand? I understand. Translate for the people. For the for the. Take pride in your in your Jewishness in your Yiddishkeit. Take pride in it. If you take pride in it, it will carry you throughout your life, as it has done me. I, I seek out and love every aspect of Judaism, the, the literature, the language, the colorful language, um, the colorful expressions. I cannot overstate how rich that is, and how fulfilling that is if you learn it and, and bring it into your life. It will enrich your life. Amen. Right. Gavin, you got any last questions for Edie? Yes, I have one more question. When did you know you were going to be okay? When did I know I was going to be okay? It after growing up with the anti-Semitism, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Well, uh, that's, that's an interesting question and it's hard to put a timeline on it because when are you over, ever okay experiencing anti-Semitism? I uh, went, uh, 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 as I grew up, I, I went into the medical field and um, uh, certainly uh, in the hospital experienced some. Uh, some of it was very subtle. Um, when did I know I was going to be okay? Well, uh, Gavin, somehow I had the strength to know that I was always going to be okay, that I would always overcome any adversity in that area that I needed to overcome. I had the support of my wonderful family, my, my amazing parents and my, my siblings. We were two boys and two girls, as I think I mentioned. And the two older were, grew up like twins and the two younger ones, my brother Perry and me, were like twins. Perry was a neurosurgeon. We spoke every day of our lives, never missed. Usually when he came out of surgery, he called or before he went into surgery, it was going to be a long time. And sadly, unbelievably, Per and I grew up like twins. We looked alike, we were, were, were alike, and had the news one day that my beloved Perry had died. And I thought I was going to die as well. So that was a little over a year ago. And I still am so grief stricken. I, I just can't get over it. I still can't believe it. So that's how we grew up. We were so tightly knit. Mm -hmm. And uh, adversity did not draw, draw, uh, bring us, throw, uh, uh, tear us apart. It brought us together. It brought us together. And uh, I think that that has been the strength of our family. And it is a strength that, that is, has been carried on by, by my niece, Deborah. Dr. Deborah Black and, and, and her husband, Michelle Cabet, who helped me get online now. He flew from the, they live on the other side of me. He ran over here to help get me online. And so, as my sister used to say always, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> that's so wonderful. Uh, Edie, you have given us so much to think about and so much strength. 
uh, in these in these terrible times. Well, uh, I hope so. I, you know, I, 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 I had no plan about what to say. I just responded from the, from the feelings of the moment. And it brings me right back to that, to my growing up time, to all of it. I can just see it all just yeah. right. Right. And now I'm the only one left. And that's, that's hard. That breaks my heart. But thank you, thank you for even thinking to do this. I, I, I deeply appreciate it. I want to I wanna thank you, um, and I want to thank uh, Gavin Murphy. Uh, yes. For those ins very insightful questions. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, and I want to thank Beth Lieberman for making oh, the connection yeah. across yeah. the generation. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the community here showing up 